Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Today, we're gonna take a look at one of the most curious footnotes in the evolution of digital audio, the DAT. That's digital audio tape. Now, I recently did a DAT video and focused more on the consumer side of the format. There's a link above. Now, that drew a lot of criticism from those who used it professionally, so we'll tackle that today. Now, to the untrained eye, it might look like a mini VHS or a weird cousin of the compact cassette, but for a solid decade, this tiny cartridge was the go-to mastering format for major labels, studios, and radio broadcasters. It was small, digital, and pristine. Until it wasn't. Stay tuned and we'll take a closer look. So let's do a quick recap and break down DAT just a little bit. Now DAT stands for Digital Audio Tape. It was developed by Sony in 1987 and it used a 4 millimeter magnetic tape enclosed in a shell just a little bit bigger than a matchbox. It looks compact, but don't let the size fool you. Internally, it used helical scan technology, just like a VCR. The tape wraps around a spinning drum at a diagonal angle, letting it record very high frequency digital signals with extreme precision. It had sample rates of 32, 44.1, and 48 kilohertz, and a 16-bit bit depth. Later versions even supported 24-bit. It had a 93 decibel dynamic range, so it blew analog tape out of the water. And the signal to noise ratio was comparable to a CD quality or better. Now, this wasn't some home hi-fi gimmick. These specs made DAT studio grade from day one. You could capture live mixes straight off the board, bounce final mixes, or even send a DAT straight to the CD manufacturing plant. In the late 80s and early 90s, DAT exploded across the commercial recording industry, and major studios began replacing reel-to-reel -reel mastering decks with DAT machines. Engineers loved how compact, clean, and reliable it was, well, at least compared to analog. Instead of carrying a 10.5-inch reel of half-inch tape for mastering, you just had this little guy. Pop it in, press record, and you're getting CD-quality digital audio. It also allowed for faster duplication workflows in CD plants and tape duplication facilities. Now, labels would send out mix approvals on DAT. Final mixes got bounced to DAT and overnighted to mastering engineers. Albums you know and love, Nirvana's Nevermind, Radiohead's Early Work, even some Bjork records, all had DAT in the mastering chain. And it wasn't just music. Radio stations switched to DAT to playback ads, liners, and promos. It replaced carts in a lot of studio setups because it offered faster queuing, indexing, and digital clarity. But not everyone loved DAT. The Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA, basically went to war over it. Why? Because DAT could make perfect digital copies of CDs. And back then, CD sales were a cash cow. They lobbied Congress hard to ban consumer DAT decks. They were claiming it would lead to rampant piracy. And that led to a legal mess that delayed DAT's rollout in the U.S. for years. And by the time it hit store shelves, it came with strings attached. Literally. Enter SCMS, Serial Copy Management System. Built into consumer DAT decks, this tech only allowed one generation of digital copying. You could make one copy from a CD, but you couldn't make a copy of that copy. Now, studios could bypass it with Pro Decks, but home users? Not so lucky. And this crippled DAT's chances as a consumer format. It never became the digital replacement for the cassette. Most people outside of the industry never even heard of it. Despite the legal drama, DAT thrived in professional environments throughout the 1990s. You had decks from Sony, Panasonic, Tascam, Iowa, and a bunch of others. Some had built-in pitch control, jog shuttles, remote queuing, or even timecode support. You could record live concerts in full stereo without carrying a real machine. In duplication plants and mastering houses and post-production facilities, DAT was everywhere. Some cassette duplicators even used DATs as their master sources. Broadcasters archived shows to DAT. Even some voiceover work was delivered on DAT well into the 2000s. I've even seen rare interviews and unreleased demos on these things, hidden in basements and radio station storage lockers. 
But by the early 2000s, the writing was on the wall. CDR burners became cheaper. DAWs like Pro Tools and Logic let you bounce mixes straight to Wave. Hard drives became reliable enough for long-term storage. Meanwhile, DAT decks were getting, well, temperamental. Misaligned heads, loading issues, error messages, chewed tape. The mechanical complexity of helical scan systems made them fragile. And parts? Well, good luck finding them now. By 2005, even Sony pulled the plug. DAT was officially dead in the water. And today, DAT lives on mostly in archives. Master tapes from the 90s are often still stuck on DAT, meaning engineers are scrambling to find working decks just to rescue those recordings before the tapes degrade or the machines fail completely. For collectors on the professional end of DAT, it's kind of niche, but it's fascinating. You can still find old professional decks floating around, tapes pop up on eBay, they're in estate sales, and radio station liquidations. And if you're lucky, you'll even find labeled tapes with names that you might recognize. You know, unreleased demos, bootlegs, or even air checks from stations that are long gone. But fair warning, playback isn't guaranteed. These decks need alignment, cleaning, and often they need recap jobs. So if you've got DAT tapes sitting in a drawer, digitize them now to something else because the clock's ticking. So that's the follow-up video for DAT, more from the professional end. Now it's a format that promised perfect sound forever and it delivered for a while, but then it disappeared. Now let me know in the comments, did you ever use DAT professionally? Do you have any DAT tapes lying around with mystery mixes or vintage audio gold? I'd love to hear what's on them. And if you want to see a full demo of a DAT deck, maybe a teardown or a live tape playback, drop me a like and hit that subscribe button because I've got a working deck and it's just begging to spin again. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate each and every one of you commenting, liking, and, and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. Just a reminder, I do have channel memberships available that give you never-before-seen footage, special videos, and a bunch of other extras. Make sure you check out supporting the channel that way by becoming a member. I'd really appreciate it. That's what helps keep this channel going. Well, until next time, again, thank you for watching, and happy listening.